Alright guys, so it's been a long testing day, but let's go ahead and get this started. This is our first video of our next unit, and this video is titled Alfred Wagner and Empirical Evidence Supporting His Theory of Continental Drift. So let's start with some nifty information and get to know Mr. Alfred Wagner a little bit better. So he's this German meteorologist and geophysicist, and one of the reasons I think he's really cool is because he just wants to learn all the time, and once he finishes learning something, he gets right into something else. So he loves learning, reads every single scientific paper he can get, and he's sitting down in the office one day and he's studying some maps, and he noticed how uh, South America and Africa seem to fit together. So this launched him into extensive research that would eventually lead to Wegener's theory of continental drift. And just a little side note, he absolutely loves hot air balloons and even proposed to his beautiful wife on a hot air balloon. So Wegener's really excited about the fact that he thinks he's really onto something. But there's a few things he has to do. First of all, he comes up with his hypothesis. Remember, a hypothesis is just an idea that's not yet proven, but leads you to want to study more. So he studies a lot more, and he comes up with his theory. And his theory, remember, a theory is just an explanation based on repeated observations, research, and experience, experiments. Uh, so he needs this evidence, and he needs this evidence so he can figure out how did we go from here to here. So let's figure that out. So before we try and figure out how he went from Pangaea to what we're looking at now, let's look at his theory and the evidence that goes with it. So Wegener's theory of continental drift is that all the continents were once joined together into this supercontinent called Pangaea, and that they've just been drifting farther and farther and farther apart to where they are now. But in order for his theory to be uh, accepted, he has to come up with this evidence. And he's going to use empirical evidence, which is just evidence based on information that you get from empirical research. And all empirical research is are these observations, experiences, and experiments. Okay, And it can be analyzed quantitatively. Remember, quantitative, think numbers, things you measure. Okay, And qualitatively, based on characteristics. Um, and then Wegener would have to model his evidence to try and support his theory. So there's a lot that goes into trying to figure out if your theory is, is good or not. So let's take a look at his empirical evidence. So if you look at this picture, let me bring up my marker so we can see it a little bit better. How about black? Alright, so we're looking at this picture, and this is really where all our evidence is going to be. We've got fossils of these ancient plants and animals. We have this little guy here called the Mesosaurus, and we're finding his remains not just in South America, but also in Africa, which would suggest that they were once together. Then you have this plant, this wonderful fern right here, and we're finding it all over the place. And the only reason it can get all over the place is because once... These were all put together. Now, besides fossils of ancient plants and animals, we also have our climate change and glaciers that we can look at. We've got the rock types in the Appalachian Mountains and Europe's mountains that tend to match. And the continents seem to fit together. I mean, if you really look, here we'll bring up red. I mean, if you really look and play with it for a second, you really can tell that it seems to fit together. Um, and then we can look at our coal fields as well. And don't worry, you're going to get even more evidence that supports this uh, in the end. So even though Wegener has all of this evidence, he's still highly criticized, uh, you know, partly because they consider him a baby geophysicist because that wasn't his original field, but more because his theory, though it was a wonderful theory, he could not explain how the plates moved. He could not explain how it went from Pangaea to what we're seeing now. But uh, spoiler alert here, guys. It's all because of our friend Convection, which you'll get to a little bit later this week. Or possibly next week. Now for a little science comedy. I want you to take a second. I want you to look at these three comics that I've given you, and I want you to explain the science behind these three comics. Explain this in your journal. We will be looking for a brief uh, written description of each of the comics, followed by your explanation with, of the science behind the comics as well. She was a tectonic plate. He was several thousand cubic miles of boiling magma. Together, they would move a nation. Coming next week, Continental Drifters, a story of motion love, on geolo geological timescale.